so I, yeah. I, I think Q1, uh, you know, uh, tell us a little bit about, about yourself. Uh, yes, your story. Sure, sure, I will do. So yeah, I know I, um, I, I grew up in Denmark originally. I'm from Denmark and um, kind of always, yeah, I've been really a, a techie kind of guy, always playing around with computers, uh, developing, even very early on, I was developing small, weird games, nothing special or anything. But at the age of 16, I, I decided to, to start a small company that would develop a, a software, a management software platform. Um, only at that time, I didn't really know that it was a company I was building. I was literally just playing around with this, developing this piece of software and um, I thought it would be great to be able to control computers in an internet cafe or gaming centers because I was kind of like half time working in one of these places and uh, and so yeah that, that company actually turned out to go on and be quite successful and was uh, and is actually today also used all over the world in, in thousands of cafes and by millions of people which was of course a great adventure. Um, always on the side of that I did a bunch of other um, uh, ideas. I was always really driven by the, the, I, the I, guess, I guess the concept of creating something new. I think that's really what, what drove me. So I would always have maybe three or four different projects going at the same time. Most of them would fail, but at least there would always be some of them that, that then would work out uh, eventually. So I actually uh, created a, a bunch of different companies uh, in the following years while I was studying. Um, and, and so my studies was in, in mathematics and finance and uh, strategic management. And I did that kind of the side. And then it was always focusing a lot more on building these tech startups. And I did, for instance, an apartment rental service in Copenhagen. We did some uh, takeaway food delivery systems and we did mobile, different mobile apps and uh, online and, and mobile advertisements and uh, a bunch of weird stuff as well that never really turned out to be anything. And, and yeah, I probably failed a, 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 a bunch of things. I can't even, I don't even know where. Uh, but still, you know, I always found it very interesting to to see when there's problems around in the world and and, and try and solve them somehow. We always had like this need to to solve problems whenever something was there. Yeah. Um, and, and 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 being a tech geek and, and having the skill to to develop something like that was just turned out to be really great because it allowed me uh, to sit down immediately whenever I had a problem the same night. I could sit down, and start coding something, could put it together, and a couple of days later, I would have like a prototype of something that could be used. Um, so yeah, so so I think that that uh, sums up pretty much quickly my, my early childhood. And then I uh, finished my studies. I moved to I did some exchange in the U.S. as well. Lived in Boston and New York and Chicago during my studies, which was great. I really love that. Uh, I was also then I moved to to um, to Switzerland in Zurich and actually uh, joined uh, to do some management consulting uh, with McKinsey. So I did that for a while. Uh, and then at some point I was like, oh, okay, God, I need to, something needs to happen. At that point, it, it, I should mention that I've been an entrepreneur for maybe, I don't know, eight, eight or nine years or something like that, maybe more at that time. And uh, and then suddenly I, I sold all my companies. I decided to do like a clean sweep. I joined management consulting. I went in there. And while I definitely learned a lot, I immediately started to miss the feeling of, of being an entrepreneur and the feeling of, of creating something that, that was... Um, that, that you could continue to build on and the, the feeling of, of actually building something for users that would that they, they would use it and they would kind of like oh this is so great you would see whenever you put whenever you put like one or let's say a hundred hours into something you knew that that would come back a thousand times again by all the users yeah. around the world that would use your software and yeah. and, and use your things so so super uh, really cool feeling and i was missing that as a consultant uh, because you you more you know, I mean you, you talk about a lot and you do a lot of slides and, and then at some point you're kind of like okay but I now I want to do this stuff I've been talking so much about so uh, so at some point I decided to uh, move to uh, Indonesia to Bali actually and uh, I do lots of kite surfing as well so it was kind of also to uh, do some wakeboarding kite surfing as well and but very quickly my urge to create companies came up and I started creating new companies and. Uh, that's basically uh, what I'm at now. So now for a couple of years, we've been uh, building up uh, uh, an incubator, basically a tech incubator here in Bali, in Indonesia. And it's basically a super awesome place. We have a couple of villas uh, for now, I think that we, uh, we are a bunch of cool people that have come together and we built different types of startups. And I just basically initiated the process uh, early on. And uh, yeah. Uh, so, so that's, that's kind of the, so, the so, story. So and, what, and right now we're... What is your current yeah, venture? So right, What's that? What is your current startup? Uh, so, so this I know is the mail yeah. application. So if you can talk us through yeah. that. Yeah. So actually, right now we're working. 
I can't, I can't even lose count sometimes. I think there's at least six different projects that we're working on. And uh, one of them, uh, they're really exciting. We just launched a Kickstarter campaign and we'll do, uh, we'll also be doing um, a lot of promotion around that. And we're launching a special beta program soon. It's called Mailbird, Mailbird and that's a, a, an email application that uh, is basically trying to innovate uh, the Windows application market by creating more uh, great looking, high quality, user friendly and, and easy, intuitive application for Windows, which I think is really missing. I, I think somehow the Mac market or the Apple uh, market has really won a, a huge market uh, because that all the apps and the developers there are really focusing a lot on the quality and the design and making it really, really good. Whereas uh, there tend to be more of a focus on features and um, all, you know, not really on design and quality and usability on Windows apps. and. And um, I think it's very few apps that actually does that on the Windows market. And we want to try and innovate that. And I think we have the right skill set to do, do that in our team. And uh, Mailbird is our first app that we're launching. We have some others as well coming out, which is really cool. But Mailbird is basically, imagine uh, email done right, super simple, very much focused on your productivity, not a lot of clutter. It's all just focused on you seeing your emails, keeping track of your conversations very easily, very socially. Um, and just uh, making your email experience, experience the best it can possibly be. Uh, it was very much inspired by Sparrow, actually, uh, who did a great job on, on the Mac. Market. Do you know Sparrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, so it, it's, uh, it's a mail app, and they got bought by Google recently for, I think it was not publicly disclosed, but I think $25 million or something like that. Okay. Uh, so, so kind of like, okay, this is a big opportunity, it's a big market, and obviously Windows, the Windows market is maybe nine times as big as the Apple market, so we saw a big opportunity there and have uh, been working a lot to get that out. And yeah, finally, we kind of launched, so, so yeah, definitely check out getmailbird.com. Um, cool. And I think the Kickstarter is uh, is slash gd slash mailbird, something like that. Don't worry, we'll find, um, it. We'll, we'll yeah. find, it. We'll find yeah. the link for sure, Michael. Yeah. Hey, that, that, that's, cool. that, that's really nice. So what's the plan? Is it is it Bali long term? Uh, is, that, is, that, is that what you're planning to do? Yeah, definitely. I mean, so every year I'm here, I start to love it more and more. It's just, I, can, I mean, I'm just going to give you a quick tour, just like the view we have from the place here. And obviously yeah. super nice. It's the pool down here. So we just have a really great uh, environment in general. Um, and uh, and also cost of living here is very low. So it just creates a whole other room of opportunities. And it honestly has boosted my productivity tremendously. So yeah. it allows me to really focus on building the companies and the startups and uh, creating cool stuff, which is what I love to do. I, I really don't enjoy doing laundry that much, and grocery shopping is also not my favorite uh, topic, and I'm definitely not good at cooking. So what we've done down here is to really, uh, I would say, automate that whole process and organize it. So it, it works extremely well, and it's just super perfect for, let's say, you have you have your new startup idea, you, you want to go here, and you want to work really focused and uh, intensely on building that one, leaving out all other distractions, while at the same time, obviously, being in a really great environment, which allows you to, to relax. Uh, and, and, and fo be productive and focus on that. So yeah, so so yes, I will definitely say I love it here. Um, that doesn't mean I won't travel around. I just see a lot of places. I really enjoy traveling and definitely love to go many more places and, and have have plans to do so. Um, and yeah, I think and, and right now, so many of the projects that we are doing, we're actually building up teams here in Indonesia. So we're collaborating a lot uh, with collaborating a lot with the local community, which is another benefit of Indonesia is that you really have a lot of great developers that are also having a very good sense of uh, design or very artistic. Uh, so a lot of great uh, talent uh, coming up really in the last couple of years, actually. So in that sense, been quite lucky with the timing going here. Um, so, so yeah, so, and that helps us a lot. So we're building actually now, uh, yes, six different projects. So there's the Mailbird one, and then we're, we're working also on a, another, actually a more secret one, but it, yeah, actually I can't even tell about it. That's more, but it's similar to Mailbird. It's, it's related and it'll be out in a couple of months as well. Okay. Uh, then uh, we have Project Gateway, which is this uh, cool event once a year. Uh, lots of entrepreneurs from all over the world come together. They live together for a month uh, and work on their own companies and startups. It's okay. really just a, a, a cool event and lifestyle experiment. Uh, then we're working uh, still on smart loans, which is one of the companies that we have here. Uh, and then we're working on a super exciting project, which is called Startup City. Um, the website is startupcitybali.com. Okay. And, uh, it's, and it's really a way for us to, to make this whole concept that we have here, this kind of a startup community that we have now. Um, we want to make that available to, uh, you know, 
thousands of people, many, many more people. So what we're currently working on doing is to create a, a, a space, like a very big, imagine a huge field, uh, probably two or three football or soccer field size. Yeah. And we'll be building a, a small city there. People will be living and focusing on building uh, companies, yeah. uh, primarily tech startups, but any kind of startup, yeah. uh, really, yeah. um, combined with uh, access to local resources and everything. So so yeah. that's going to be really huge, uh, a lot of fun. And it's just, yeah, that's just super cool to, to do. So um, so that we're working on. I'm, I'm, oh, yeah, then what are we doing here? So just quickly, we're also working on some very exciting uh, entertainment games. So yeah. one of them is called uh, Startup Spirits, and another one is, is Lapster, and it what we want to do is to make education fun and engaging. So basically, uh, you know, education today has gotten so boring, uh, especially it's hard to compete with games like World of Warcraft. And, and so what we're doing is uh, bringing uh, university and high school entertainment to life by yeah. creating fun and engaging games. And uh, we have, yeah, Lapster especially is kicking off. We've got Stanford already and a bunch of other really high-level universities. So that's super exciting. So yeah, we're doing a lot of fun stuff down here. And, and I think that really the, the, the big mission and vision for all of us here is to make that available to as many people as possible and by building this big city uh, environment. Um, so, startup city. Yeah. Cool. I think that now it got a little bit longer, than, but yeah, I hope that gives you. No, no, no. It's, uh, you know, as I said, right, it's kind of very free flow. It, uh, it goes the direction you'd like it to go. So, so no, that's nice. So, so, so what, what have been, um, I, I, think, I think one of my favorite questions is what have been some defining moments? Uh, in, in, in life as such that have shaped this path, right? So, you know, you, you yeah. did, I know you did Smart Launch and, you know, that went really well. And then you did a whole bunch of, you know, little startups, went to consulting, came out and then went to Bali, uh, I guess, in, in, as you know, of course, I know you a little bit personally. So I know inspired by Tim Ferriss and the four hour work week, uh, you know, really went out, did that, tried it, um, still loving it. So, so what have been some of the defining defining moments? So yeah, so like as you always said, there's been many of them I think in my life, but um, but definitely I think uh, just having the experience of creating a startup where uh, you get users that um, that actually that appreciate your work and really and uh, really appreciate it and are and you can see that the stuff that you created if it's other users that makes them happy and and makes them more productive or, or more profitable or whatever it might be. That experience in itself has uh, for sure uh, changed my whole life to really focus on uh, like being an entrepreneur my entire life. That's that, that that was probably one of the most defining moments when I got that that feeling and experience. And it keeps coming back to me whenever we build something and we, we talk to our users, especially at like Mailbird, we have some we have our beta test users and they literally I mean I'm not they can't get their arms down and like oh this is the best and I'm I'm not trying to sell it, it's, but it's such a cool experience to see that. And now obviously we put tons and tons of hours into creating it, but just getting those um, that reward back is, is worth all of it. And it's, it somehow doesn't even become about the money or anything like that at that point. It's really about creating something that people enjoy uh, to use. Uh, so, so yeah, definitely that has been a, a big moment. I think one of the things that always come back to me is I, I at a pretty early age, I started listening to audio books. Um, and uh, and I I, I, I kind of liked listening to it when um, when I was like driving or commuting or, or stuff like that. So instead of listening to music, I started to listen to audiobooks, um, especially around personal self development. And that has definitely uh, changed my life and something I still do a lot. Um, I at that point it was a lot around uh, Anthony Robbins, uh, reading uh, and also. Um, yeah, own what is his name for an eyebrow, but uh, a lot of these really high-profile personal development uh, coaches, and uh, that definitely changed my life. I even had a, a personal coach, uh, both a personal development coach, but also got a business coach. Uh, so I would really try and, and connect with people who had experience and try to figure out how can I learn from them, and, and that has definitely shaped a lot of my life as well, and still do to this day. I, I really always focus on learning, learning new things, and try and develop my skills in any area, um, uh, which is great. So it kind of gave me that, after a while, it gave me that belief that there's honestly nothing that we can't do. It's really, there's only things we haven't learned to do yet. Yeah, yeah. I so much believe that right now, which somehow just opens up the whole world to you that, you know, really there's nothing you cannot do. I say, I just, if, if this is, if I want to do this, then I'll figure out a way to do it. 
Um, and that's huge. Uh, that, that really changes your whole perspective on life. Um, so, yeah, so that's been great. Um, and then obviously, you know, even I, actually I would say consulting was actually a big, uh, um, big defining moment for me. It was my first real job, I would say, my first after being an entrepreneur for many, many years. Yeah. And it was a huge eye-opener in the way that, I'm okay, I'm never going to have a... Um, I need to be an entrepreneur, that was basically it. So it kind of confirmed me in the idea that, okay, I, I need to create something that, that's 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 my calling, kind yeah. of. Um, which in itself just makes uh, everything much more relaxing somehow. It's kind of like just, oh, okay, that's it, great. I don't need to worry about that anymore. Um, and at the same time, I obviously learned a lot during the whole process, so, so that was great too. And then I think the last one has been coming here to Bali and to experiencing the... I would say the um, the culture of Bali, uh, of the Balinese people especially, um, the the way that that you can enjoy anything. Uh, you know, it's not really about getting the biggest car, the biggest house, the biggest uh, whatever it might be. Uh, that that is really just encapsulated in the Balinese uh, culture and uh, the way that everyone here is just always friendly and smiling and happy. And that really kind of also changes your whole perspective on, on life again. So, uh, yeah. So, it's, so, so, again, many different moments. And I'm probably, I'm definitely leaving out something uh, <laughs> at this time here, but but for sure. Um, so I think uh, one of the things that, that I would even encourage people to do is to try and throw yourself out in, uh, in, in situations where you get uncomfortable, because that's usually, I feel like, that's where uh, those moments kind of arise. Um, and uh, actually, I, ha I even have it like, so whenever I get uncomfortable, I feel like, oh, I, I shouldn't do this. I immediately switch over, okay, then I have to do it just because I, I've learned through the years that, you know, it's such a big chance for something super great and, and life changes to come out of those experiences. So, so yeah. Well, that's nice. Yeah, so, so, nice. So, so, so what are some, uh, you know, you talked about Bali being great for your productivity, right? So what are some little productivity hacks and tricks that you use on a day-to-day -day basis? Oh, there's, there's lots of, I love, uh, pro, the concept of productivity is huge for me. I love it a lot. And uh, I studied math and optimization. So obviously it's also part of my whole education to kind of tweak everything to the optimal. So um, I think uh, in general, I, 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 I would, I read a lot about optimization. I think it's a lot about finding and testing out different types of uh, productivity methods and finding the one that works for you. Because what I've seen, at least towards people and also my own experience, is that it's really it's, it's very individual and depends on the way you work, what you work with, uh, what kind of uh, do you need to talk with a lot of people, or can you focus on your own? Do you work in teams and so on? So it, all those things define it a lot. For me, what works a lot is uh, to have a, a daily habit of. Uh, a to do application where you know or to do where I basically spend 10 to 15 minutes every morning and I plan uh, the day and I decide it's usually less than 10 5 to 10 tasks that this is this is going to be my day sometimes the day before um, and then what I do is I I consider the purpose a lot of the of those tasks so not just you know what am I going to do but also why am I going to do it and remind myself of that all the time because usually what you realize is that oh if this is why I'm doing it then hmm, I I could do it much faster by doing this, or I might not even have yeah. to do it at this yeah. point. Uh, those kind of insights, is, you get that when you start thinking about the why of, of what you're doing. Uh, so, so, so that's definitely a huge one. Then um, I think uh, the the two two minute rule. So I, I do a lot of emails and uh, spend a lot of time in this. Try really to minimize it. So I try to whenever I can solve a task or anything, I get an email. If I can solve it less than two minutes, I do it immediately. Uh, and I think that's a big one as well. It really helps a lot. Um, then yeah, there's so many things that right by now it's really just uh, automatic for me. But I, I tested a lot with a tool called Pomodoro. Uh, oh, yeah. Method is kind of a yeah, you know, so basically work for 20 to 25 minutes, take a break for five to 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, and I, I tested a lot and I do it in, in periods of time. And I think it's great for a couple of reasons. One is that uh, you this, you really decide, okay, now I'm going to work on this and you can focus much more easily yeah. on that. You, would try, you, you generally at least should try to leave out any distraction in that period of time. Yeah. And so that helps a lot. But what actually came out to be a bigger insight for me was that during the breaks, you know, you take the five to 10 minute breaks, that's when you think about, okay so what did I actually do in the last 20 to 25 minutes what how did I spent my time was it good should I have done something different 
And so I started really evaluating that. I think that was even more beneficial to me than the five to 10 minute breaks every time. Um, and obviously then it also cleans the mind and then you go back to working and, uh, and you can feel this again. So, so those are some of them. Um, besides that, pro for me, probably the biggest thing actually we had to say for something for productivity is exercise. Uh, really try to do exercise. So every morning I do five to 10 minutes exercise just to get the blood pumping. And then I do some CrossFit a couple of times a week. And we do that down here actually with all the other cool people here. So it's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, so, yeah, definitely lots of exercise. And then obviously with that comes eating habits, eating well, um, reducing your number of, uh, so the latest one I've been reading about is the, you know, it's not so much the amount of carbohydrates that you eat that determines your productivity um, or focus. It's more the, the, the amount or the chunks of, of uh, carbohydrates that you get. So you need, of course, to get slow, uh, slow carbs uh, so that you can absorb them slower or you can eat smaller chunks of food during the day. Uh, so we, we experimented with a lot of that down here as well. And we actually now have it so that the staff here, they serve food five times during the day. So you can always, you actually are just sitting working and they serve the snacks for you and you get a healthy juice as well at the same time. And I really think that that helps a lot too. Um, not directly the productivity, but you keep your mind fresh for a lot more hours um, than, than you would normally be able to, to focus on. So, yeah, that's that's all of the quick, the no, quick that, that's really helpful. So, final yeah, question, uh, since we are fast running out of time. Um, what is your advice to, to, to others, you know, who are, uh, uh, as I said, you know, the, the, the intention here is that you have people who are, you know, looking to lead or are leading or have been leading. What is, what are some mm -hmm. thoughts that you'd like to share from your, you know, experiences that you, that you think have worked well and will work well for, for, for many others too? Yeah. To become a good leader, that's the, uh, the You know, it's a good question, right? But uh, for me, it's a bit more generic. I think, I think a lot of people... You know, you know. I, I think it goes back to sort of why, how or why do you lead, right? And I think you lead by by being by being a good person, right? And and by by doing things, in in my view, right? Mm -hmm. That that's kind of how inspiration is generated. Of course, you do things with yeah. a purpose, ideally, but but you know. Yeah. So 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 yeah. so, what are thoughts that thoughts on leadership that 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 you feel you know you'd like to share? Yeah. So I think um, a couple of years back when I, I was listening to all these audio books and to, uh, on personal development, one of the things I realized is it was a lot about me, 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 and you know, improving myself and improving me. And, uh, so at some point I decided to switch the focus that uh, my goal was no longer to improve myself, but it was to inspire others to improve their life uh, and get more out of their life. So kind of, kind of, kind of uh, my mission became to inspire others. So obviously, somehow still the goal was to become the best I could possibly be, but at least the mission and mission was bigger. And that has really helped me a lot, I think, uh, to put focus on other people and to uh, really con you know, think about how other people are, are doing and, and how they're enjoying their life, how they're working and how they're communicating, all these different things. And I try a lot uh, to... Uh, put my emphasis on, on actually helping people if they want to. Uh, you, of course, shouldn't be, be doing yeah, that. So, yeah, uh, so uh, yeah, yeah. So, so that, that's at least um, a big thing. I think that ties up to uh, just generally uh, caring a lot about other people. Um, I think that's uh, that's a super important point. Um, I like. Uh, there's a book. Um, I'll send it to you, but it's a great one. It talks about six different types of leadership styles. And um, what actually was uh, the eye opener for me there was that, you know, it's not about having one leadership style, for instance. It's, mm -hmm. it's more about being capable of in using all six, so okay. in this case, six different leadership styles um, and, and adjust them to the right moments uh, and, and use them carefully and, and in the right, yeah, it's right situations as well, and so so that one at least I think is a very important insight as well that it's not about being that that one person, but always to try and to adapt to the circumstances, always try to see how how things are doing, and again really observing how the people around you are, are doing, and, and, and looking for those often hidden signals that 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 many people tend to to overlook, uh, and I think that's the ties into the skill of empathy, which. I think if you have that one and, and, and really master that skill, which I in no way do yet, it's like probably the most important, uh, complicated skill. Uh, but the emotional intelligence in general, if you have that one, you can you can really get far. And I think people will tend to follow you a lot more 
uh, in general, which in, in the end would lead, hopefully, of course, to great results. I think those are some of the, the things. And really, yeah, see, see it as find a way to try and inspire people to improve their lives, and, and they would, would, would love you for it in, in return, I, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, uh, th that's, that's super helpful, Michael. Thank you so much for taking the time. That, uh, You're welcome. Was, was... Thank you.